Hi everyone, I hope you've been enjoying a lot and learning a lot. This is a fantastic platform to get the, all the new knowledge what is in the waste management field. So my name is Maria Jakpinen. I am the Young Professionals Group of Finnish Chapter founder. And um, just to briefly to tell you about our chapter, what we've been doing, we've been hosting a lot of morning coffee events where a lot of professionals would come and tell what's happening as of now in the waste and circle economy business, as well as we've been arranging waste uh, run and pick up events. And, and we are actually part of the one of the EU funded projects as well. But if you wanna join us and our platform at the comment section, I do believe so, there will be a link to our email um, newsletter. So please do join us. We are on LinkedIn. You can also approach us over the email, which shall also be found on the comments. So have fun, learn, enjoy. Mwah. Hello, my name is Ana Maria and I am from Brazil. I am a researcher at NEPE, a research group focused on waste management from the University of Sao Paulo. Today I will present our research about the selective collection in a Brazilian waste consortium. What is a selective collection? It is a system for collecting each kind of waste separately. Furthermore, it is essential to waste management and circular economy, as it promotes resource recovery and circulation, besides generating work and income for waste pickers. Besides the importance of these systems, many cities face challenges implementing them, especially in developing countries, as Brazil. As you can see in these graphs, in 2020, just 30% of Brazilian cities did selective collection, and as a consequence of that, just 2% of the waste was recovered. To change this scenario and improve the selective collection in Brazil, we need to understand the implementation process. So our aim with this research was to evaluate the implementation of the selective collection in Brazilian cities. We selected a waste public consortium of 35 cities as a case study and 34 of them accepted to participate in the research. I traveled to all the cities in 2019, uh, and I did field visits, as you can see in these pictures. I visited certain plants and dump sites, and I also interviewed public managers from the city halls. As a result, we found that only nine seats carried out selective collection that year, all of them in a door-to-door -door format and separating waste in two fractions, dry and wet. They had one truck for recyclable materials, and the destination of it was a sorting plant. The other fraction, called wet, was composed of organic waste and rejects, for example, toilet paper. Uh, they were collected together, mixed, and they were sent to final disposal. One of the cities had a sanitary landfills, but the others still used dump sites. As you can see, they just recovered recyclable materials, so all the organic waste was sent to final disposal. Another problem found was regarding the collection coverage. It was 100% in only uh, four cities. The other five collected recyclable materials in a few areas of the city, so they need to expand the coverage. Another challenging that deserves our attention is regarding the inclusion of waste pickers. These important workers were present in all the cities I visited, but they were hired and paid for their service in only two. Some difficulties mentioned in the interviews was the problems with the separation at source by the population, political problems because some mayors didn't have interest in selective collection and they didn't want to spend money with the systems. They also mentioned that the system, the, col the selective collection system was very expensive and they didn't have enough money to improve it, so they need support from the state government. Regarding the other 25 cities, 
uh, they collected mixed waste and sent it to dump sites. Among the reasons mentioned to not carry out selective collection, uh, as you can see, there was lack of resource and political problems related to the lack of interest from mayors in this subject. And they also mentioned that they had other priorities, such as closing dump sites. So they need to solve this problem first, and then they will think about the selective collection. As a consequence of this scenario, 95% of household waste collected in that area in 2019 was sent to final disposal, most of them in dump sites. So the collection, the waste recovery rate was very low and need to be improved. We concluded that few cities carried out selective collection and all the, seats, the systems that already existed need improvement, especially regarding the recovery of organic waste. So here we have some suggestions to the cities to improve waste management. For example, invest in sorting and composting infrastructure. So we suggest the, the composting of organic waste, which is a low cost solution. We also suggest environmental education campaigns for the population, the inclusion of waste speakers in waste management systems, and joint actions and exchange of experience between cities as they are already in a consortium and they should take advantage of it to share resource, knowledge, and to improve waste management together. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Here are my contact information if you want to talk with me, ask some questions, and learn more about our research at NEPE. So that's it. Thank you. Bye. Hello and Namaste from Isfa YPG Nepal chapter. I'm Asis Kanal. So I'm, I'll be sharing about the current waste management practices of Nepal. What are the uh, challenges in waste management sector in Nepal? And as a Isfa YPG Nepal chapter representative, what work we have done earlier and what are our next plans? So if you talk about Nepal, Nepal is a small country we can see in the map. It's located between uh, India and China in the South Asian region. It's a least developed country. Uh, if you talk about the waste, Nepal generates almost 4,900 tons of municipal solid waste in a day. And the majority of the waste that is generated, they are organic in nature. That is waste resource recovery. The recovery of waste is very less. Uh, there is lack of segregation. Um, skilled manpower and the technology are for the proper management of those generated solid waste. And uh, this is the region due to the lack of the sufficient recycling facilities in Nepal. Most of the recyclables are sold to sale and they are um, sent to the neighboring country, India. Through the household solid waste composition, uh, majority of our waste consists of organic in nature, almost 65%. The dry recyclables consist of 25% and 10% are the uh, reject waste, which actually has uh, no value. So if you look this uh, waste composition, uh, we, we can conclude that almost 90% uh, municipal solid waste that can actually be uh, recycled in some way. But the scenario is different. And the majority of waste that is generated uh, if we talk about uh, Kathmandu Valley, uh, which is um, the highly dense urban center in Nepal and also the capital city of Nepal. So um, even the scenario is same. The maximum waste reaches to the landfill site. This is one of the landfill site, Sisto landfill site. Though currently we have a new landfill site called Bansare Rana. The scenario is same. Means uh, there are uh, informal sectors who are segregating those waste and making their income by selling those waste that comes to the landfill site. If you look at daily household waste projection, and the major challenge that we are going to face in next 20 years is, um, though we are generating almost 550 tons of municipal solid waste in Kathmandu only, so it's going to be almost a double in next 20 years. So the, the real scenario where 
the west would be and major east will be yet to come. So looking this, um, a youth from Nepal who are actually engaged in the solid waste management sector, uh, we thought of launching ISWA YPC Nepal chapter. So we recently started it in April 2022. So these are the four members who works for ISWA YPC Nepal chapter. Regarding our work in 8th June 2022, uh, ISWA YPC Nepal chapter in collaboration with ISWA YPG Pakistan, even Habitat and Waste Wise Cities, uh, we conducted a South Asia Waste Wise Education webinar where we have uh, a multiple uh, good waste management practices from Nepal as well, from Pakistan, Bhutan, and India. We have lots of um, good speakers who are working in this solid waste management sector. So we have successfully conducted this waste wise education webinar. Now our uh, plan for the upcoming um, months are say for this year actually. So that is we have collaborated with a local NGO which is working in Kathmandu and other parts of uh, Nepal as well. So they are going to organize a program called Green Child Project, where uh, it's, it's just like a, a zero waste at the school model, where the students, uh, they need to segregate the waste, so then after it reaches to the facility where the compost are made, the recyclables are uh, sold to the recycling facilities, and uh, the waste is managed in-house inside the school premises. So we have collaboration with organization where the ISO YPG Nepal chapter will provide trainings, waste segregation trainings, composting, um, and the best way of managing those waste at the school. So we'll be providing trainings to the school students. There are five schools they are finalized. So we will tie up with them and bring this program. So these are basically um, the program that we are going to start from August 2022. So if you want to uh, join Nepal chapter, we are always happy. So even we open for the four members or any volunteers from the remote areas or even from Nepal or outer areas, you can find us on Facebook, this for YPZ Nepal, or you can join our WhatsApp group as well. So if you want to make your hands dirty, join us. We are keeping organizing program in the waste management and supply section. So thank you for listening to me. Moting is waste until we decide to waste it. Thank you.